Science has been a fundamental part of human existence since the beginning of time. It is more than just a set of facts or equations. It's a tool that helps us understand the world around us and allows us to improve our lives. Plus, it helps us appreciate the natural beauty of our planet. On the other hand, science doesn't explain everything. And I'm just here to update you about some of the really cool, exciting new research about this animal. And that is about its diet or what it ate. Like how a mountain can lay an egg or why rabbits have started doing handstands. Or even weirder, why this real life Papa Smurf turned blue. 15 most incredible discoveries scientists still can't explain. <laughs> Clay Head. Scientist discovers what no one was supposed to see and it's as creepy as it looks. But what's inside is even creepier. A life-size clay head from ancient Siberia has revealed a ram skull inside a human-shaped shell. Made by the Tagar culture who occupied the south of the region between the 8th and 2nd centuries BC. The death mask was discovered in 1968, and thanks to modern techniques, only now can its true nature be seen. Getting inside the head wasn't an option as the object had become too fragile over time. X-rays illuminated a small hollow space inside containing one freaky looking skull. Recent investigations using X-rays that capture internal images in real time have shown the remains are in fact those of a ram. Researchers theorized that a Tagar burial had two stages. The body was boxed up and left to decompose for a few years. The skeleton was then wrapped in grass, leather, and bark creating a representation of its former owner. As for this clay head, the Tagar people may have buried in this extraordinary manner a man whose body had not been found. For this reason, he was replaced with the animal in which his soul was embodied, and in this was sent to the afterlife alongside the remains of his fellow humans. Egg-Laying Mountain Situated in southeast China, this cliff produces something remarkable every 30 years or so. This cliff regularly produces a large round rocks known as cliff eggs. In an area measuring 66 feet wide and 20 feet tall, the stone eggs as heavy as 660 pounds drop from the cliff every three decades. The nearest village contains just 20 households, but has become well known for its strange egg-laying rock face. And these rock spheres are thought to be lucky by the locals who collect them and prominently feature them in their homes and gardens. Over the years, geologists have provided some possible explanations for the cause of the phenomenon. However, no official ones have been confirmed. The main theory among rock experts is that they are lumps formed by calcium carbonate molecules in the deep sea, which turned into high mountains over time. The cliff is made of a common type of rock that was formed about 500 million years ago. The eggs, on the other hand, are concentrations made of tougher, heavier sediment deposits. This means that the cliff face tends to erode away quicker than the eggs. The roundness of the eggs is likely due to running water. Desert Lines They appear to be wide lines drawn with some white material, or maybe the dust has been dug by machinery. However they were created, these mysterious lines in a Chinese desert have caused a lot of confusion for authorities globally. The tracks are perfectly executed, and they seem to be designed to be seen from orbit. It covers an area approximately one mile long by more than 3,000 feet wide. Perhaps it's some kind of targeting or calibrating grid for spy satellites. Maybe it's a QR code for aliens. The second structure seems to be some kind of giant targeting grid. If you zoom in closer, you can see vehicles destroyed. It's west of what seems to be a fairly big electrical station or a radio station. The third one end is perhaps the craziest of them all. Thousands of lines intersecting in a titanic grid that is about 18 miles long. Another targeting grid? A big practical joke? These mysterious objects sparked a wave of speculation that could be anything from secret codes to practice targets to alien mischief. And since the initial reports of these structures, more have been spotted. Their existence may seem suspicious, but grids like these can be used for weather tracking and high altitude atmospheric research. Exploding Craters What is methane gas? The colorless, odorless, and highly flammable gas is one of the most potent greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere. It's 30 times stronger than carbon dioxide. So as more of the gas is released into the atmosphere, its effects could serve to accelerate negative climate change. 
And inevitably, when the methane explodes through the Earth's surface, these massive gas-leaking craters are left behind. The accumulation of gas, the pressure rise, and the development of gas dynamic processes in the cavity in the Earth's core led to the explosion and formation of the crater. Around the crater's edge, the Earth is a torn gray jumble of ice and clods of permafrost. The roots of plants newly exposed around the rim show signs of scorching. It gives some idea of just how violently these holes in the middle of the Siberian Arctic materialized. Similar scars and mounds related to gas pocket emissions have been found on the floor of the Kara Sea, just off this region of the Yamal Peninsula, and others have been found in the Barents Sea. But so far, nothing similar has been found on land elsewhere in the Arctic. Something about the permafrost in Yamal and Gaiden makes them prone to these exploding mounds. Nampa Figurine This find was discovered near the city of Nampa, Idaho, well over a century ago. A group of well drillers were working on the site. As the story goes, once at a depth of roughly 300 feet, the object known as the Nampa Figurine blasted to the surface. Amongst the projectiles, the workers discovered a tiny clay form the size of a dime that appeared to have been formed into the shape of a skinny clothed woman. Many experts date the object at over 2 million years, a time period when crafting such an object would have been next to impossible, say some historians. And that's why it's still stirring debate among scientists and historians. There are several ways in which the figurine could have worked its way down to the 2 million year old layer fissures in the rock, volcanic activity, mining activity, etc. Indeed, some skeptics argue that the very same drill that brought the figurine to light initially pushed it down so deep. It is important to remember that no other human artifact of such an ancient age has been found anywhere in the New World. And people have looked. Whatever the case, there is not one other single artifact of human manufacture from the whole of North or South America that is anywhere near as old as this. Dinosaur Mummy The Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology in Alberta, Canada recently unveiled a dinosaur so well preserved that many have taken to calling it a dinosaur mummy. This is definitely not your regular fossil. Usually just the bones and teeth of a dinosaur are found preserved. But the creature's rapid undersea burial 110 million years ago perfectly kept its skin and bones intact. When this dinosaur, a member of the newly discovered species called Notosaur, was alive, it was an enormous four-legged herbivore weighing in at approximately 3,000 pounds. Today, the mummified nodosaur is so intact that it still weighs 2,500 pounds. Researchers found that the dinosaur's armor plates change shape over its body, with the spiny protrusions towards the front of the bulky creature's body growing noticeably larger and more prominent, kind of like the horns of a bull. They also uncovered fossilized sheaths made of protein keratin surrounding the armor plates, which would have added to their bulk and length, described as the Mona Lisa of dinosaurs. The rhino-sized creature's exaggerated spines along its neck and shoulders were likely used to attract a mate. It was also used for intimidating rival dinosaurs too. Mutant Rabbits an unusual breed of domesticated rabbit uses its front paws to walk in a handstand position, and researchers have finally figured out why. This breed of rabbits adapts their locomotion behavior for longer and or faster movements by lifting the hind limbs off the ground and moving similarly to a human acrobat when walking on hands. In a recent study, researchers discovered that a single gene may explain why the breed called Alfort jumping rabbit walks on its front legs instead of hopping. The reason why these rabbits can't move as efficiently as other rabbits comes down to a genetic mutation, according to the study. This particular rabbit is unable to perform the characteristic jumping of other breeds and has therefore compensated by adopting this abnormal style of movement. The spinal cord humans have is full of these neurons that is connecting the brain with the musculature that drives our limbs. However, with this particular mutation, the researchers noticed these particular neurons weren't present in the spinal cords of the rabbits that couldn't hop. Without those proteins which help to coordinate the left and right sides of the body, the rabbits were unable to properly coordinate their hind legs. Papa Smurf Paul Carasone was an American from Bellingham, Washington, whose skin turned a purple-blue color over a period of about a decade. He wasn't born this way. 
Garrow's son was fair-skinned and freckled until his complexion began to develop the bluish hue associated with Argyria, a condition caused by excessive exposure to chemical compounds of the element silver. He saw an ad in a New Age magazine promising health and rejuvenation, so he drank about 10 ounces a day of the home brew that he dissolved in water. In those first months, he didn't notice a change in his skin color. He hadn't even realized his skin had turned a shade of blue until an old friend came to visit. According to Papa Smurf, his friend looked at him and said, What have you got on your face? I don't have anything on my face, Carason said. And that's when it hit him. He was literally blue. And there were positive changes in his health too. In an attempt to treat problems with his sinuses, dermatitis, acid reflux, and other issues, he claimed his silver supplements cured most of these conditions. As for whether it was the colloidal silver that had cured him, Carason said, there's not the slightest doubt in my mind. Unfortunately, Karasan died at the age of 62 after being treated for pneumonia, after having suffered a heart attack. Snow Rollers Found mostly in the open prairies of North America and south remote regions of Northern Europe, snow donuts like this are rarely seen because of the number of weather conditions that need to be just right for them to form, including wind, temperature, snow, ice, and moisture. Unlike snowballs made by people, snow rollers are typically cylindrical in shape, and are often hollow since the inner layers, which are the first layers to form, are weak and thin compared to the outer layers. A snow donut can range in size from no bigger than a tennis ball to more than two feet. It's tough for them to get this big because the snow needs to have just the right amount of elasticity. And due to their hollow shape, a newly formed snow donut can be easily blown away and destroyed if the wind is too strong. So, how do they form? There has to be a relatively thin surface layer of wet snow on the ground. Under that layer, there needs to be a substrate that wet snow won't stick to. For example, ice or powder snow. You need wind that's strong enough to lift it and then move the snow roller along. Gravity helps to move them downhill. Snow Roller 101 They might look like icy man-made structures, but these tire-shaped curiosities are entirely natural. Jade Mummies There have been fewer than two dozen of these designer mummy suits found since their discovery. But elaborate burial suits like these were first documented in literature around AD 320. Although there is archaeological proof of their existence over half a millennium before, these ceremonial suits made of pieces of jade were used by royal members of China's Han Dynasty. And yes, members of the ancient Chinese royal families were buried in them. It was extremely expensive to create, and only the wealthiest people could afford to be buried in them. Additionally, the process of manufacturing a suit was labor-intensive. Even the most skilled jade smith would have taken over 10 years to make one of the suits. Of the jade suits that have been found, the pieces of jade are mostly square or rectangular in shape, composed of over 2,000 plates. They are often joined utilizing wire and threaded through small holes drilled near the corners of each piece. The type of wire used was dependent on the status of the person buried. Emperors used gold thread, princes and princesses silver thread, and lesser aristocrats silk thread. Everyone else was forbidden to be buried in jade burial suits. Geckos run on water The flat-tailed house gecko is a common pet reptile native to southern and southeast Asia. Not only can bristles on its toes help it climb walls and hang from ceilings, but it can glide through the air with the aid of its webbed feet and skin flaps. And as you can see, walking on water is not a problem either. Researchers found that they could run up to nearly 3 feet per second over water, faster than the swimming speeds of many aquatic creatures including ducks, muskrats, juvenile alligators, and marine iguanas. However, the flat-tailed house gecko's size posed a mystery. At roughly 6 grams in weight, the mouse-sized reptile seemed too heavy to rely on surface tension, but too light to generate enough slapping force to keep their bodies above water. Researchers discovered that the animals combined up to four strategies to run across the water. Surface tension was essential to the reptile's success, plus slapping movements with all four legs created air pockets that helped keep their bodies from completely submerging. Thrown in super water repellent skin, lastly the geckos undulated their bodies and tails which helps with propulsion. This discovery of the combination of techniques the reptile uses to race across the water could one day lead to robots capable of the same feats, researchers said. 
hexagon storm. Jupiter may be the planet whose swirling gaseous storms have mesmerized us since they were first observed through the lens of a telescope, but Saturn is now stealing some of that attention. Saturn has a mysterious hexagon at its north pole. Researchers first caught sight of this strange turbulence in 1981. Since then, there have been two persisting hypotheses about the origin of the hexagon. One suggests that the hexagon is a shallow formation caused by alternating gas jets. The other, which the team found more plausible, says that the eastward jets are actually thousands of miles deep. This unexplored zone of Saturn's layers is thought to be extremely high pressure and has a much more volatile temper, meaning the planet's rotation and possibly its other features are just instigating a storm in a place where pressure is tens of thousands of times greater than in the upper layers. But scientists now believe that vortexes occur at the planet's north pole because of the atmospheric flows deep within the gas giant and that these vortexes pinch an intense horizontal jet near the equator, which is what warps the storm into a hexagon. The hexagonal flow pattern on Saturn is a striking example of turbulent self-organization. However, the mechanism of its formation and its depth remains unclear. Singing Rocks while there are many boulder fields scattered throughout Pennsylvania, there are very few that possess a very specific property. They ring when they are hit with a hammer. In fact, these fields are quite rare with only a handful known in the entire world. However, in Bucks County, you'll find Ringing Rocks Park. The rock field occupies seven acres of an otherwise wooded area and is over 10 feet deep with boulders. Not only are these fields incredibly beautiful, but they do indeed ring when you hit them with a hammer. Make sure you bring a hammer with you from home when you visit the park. Ringing rocks sound resonant and reverberant, almost like a metal pipe. If you happen to be having trouble finding rocks that ring, look for spots that have obvious damage from being hit by hammers. These spots are especially easy to find near the edge of the field. Only about a third of the rocks ring. However, and for a long time, why the rocks rang at all was unclear. So in 1965, a group of scientists crushed, broke, and sliced the rocks. After performing numerous tests, they found that while all the rocks do in fact ring, they often do so at tones lower than the human ear can perceive, and they don't work anywhere but there. Cockno Stone the Cockno Stone, which is thought to date back to 3000 BC, is considered one of the best examples of cup and ring markings in Europe. Cup and ring marks are a form of prehistoric art found widely throughout the world. They consist of a round indentation, the cup, surrounded by a series of concentric circles that look like ripples on water. The symbols date back to the Neolithic and Early Bronze Age, but some examples have been found to date from the Iron Age. Discovered in 1887 on a section of farmland in Scotland, this discovery caused a sensation when it was unearthed. So, to protect it from further damage, an archaeologist decided to bury it under several feet of soil. In fact, this rock was deliberately buried for 50 plus years. As you can see, nearly half a century after it was buried, the 5,000 year old Cockno stone has been re-excavated. It features around 90 carved indentations, the finest sets of petroglyphs in Scotland. Some experts believe they may have been an ancient form of writing or recording events or perhaps a unit of measure. Others have suggested they may be artwork that symbolized life and death. It is possible the Cockno Stone was used in ancient Stone Age ceremonies. Bet's Sphere in the spring of 1974, the Betts family investigated a small brush fire near their residence in Fort George Island, Florida. They came across a small metal sphere the size of a bowling ball, so they decided to take the sphere back to their house. Several days later, one family member was playing the guitar in their home. The sphere seemed to react to the sound of the guitar, it made a throbbing noise. Later the sphere was noticed to roll on its own, and even stop on its own and change direction. The Betzes reported that the sphere moved on its own several times, and that it would follow people around the house seemingly on its own. When an expert examined the sphere, they found radio waves coming from it and a magnetic field around it. However, the first x-ray attempts failed because the machine wasn't strong enough to penetrate the steel, but two subsequent tests showed the contents of the globe. Based on mixed information, researchers believe there are different sections of different materials inside the sphere 
making it unknown to terrestrial science despite being coated in a carefully human-developed steel alloy. A 2012 analysis indicated the sphere was a ball check valve. The reality is that the ball's existence can probably be chalked up to a regular manufactured object that got lost. As much as we rely on science to answer the tough questions we all face during our time on this planet, sometimes it's just not possible. But then, we wouldn't have great videos about fascinating discoveries like these to keep us asking questions.